My name is Bernardina Hernandez. I'm from Oaxaca and I speak Spanish and I understand everything in English, but sometimes the work is difficult for me and uh, I will try to do my best. We're going to the meetings today. We're going to have a meeting with my people. Well, with um, my Oaxaca people, where I am from. Tengo 23 años, vivo en Hallister, California, y somos una familia muy grande. Y ahora lo voy a decir en mi dialecto, en mi idioma, que es triqui, que es mi, triqui, uh, mi uh, lenguaje original. Um, 23 yo va, ne hizo Hallister, California, ne, ne hizo, va eso, madu, ya en familia. ¿Cómo estás, ne? ne hizo, ¿cómo estás, ne hizo? Cochino, ne hija. Many of California's most recent immigrants come from Mexico's southern state of Oaxaca, where entire pueblos speak the same indigenous languages they've spoken for thousands of years. When that start that I have to go interpret it, oh my God, it was so hard for me to stand there, talk to all the women. They speak tricky good, and I try to speak the tricky the, how they speak, and sometimes I say things that I should not say. <laughs> we have a lot of language, different language in Oaxaca. So sometimes they come to the um, United States, they don't know English, Spanish, and we try to show them what is the right things for them to do here in the United States because a lot of things in Oaxaca, we don't have medicine, we don't have doctor, we don't have that much people to help us. And here we have a lot of choice to do, so it's good to think if they know what to do. Tradition keeps tricky women at home with their children, and language isolates them from the world. But in Hollister, they meet every month at a local church as part of the Oaxacan Women's Project. It's so difficult for them that they, have, they don't drive. They don't speak Spanish. They, don't, they can't drive uh, right, neither. So that's why I choose to help them because I know that it's so hard. Yo tengo siete por todos. Yo trajo cinco niños en México y dos nacidos aquí. Sí, vamos, mija, adentro. Y a cenar. Me va a hacer todos los días esa tortilla grande <laughs> para comer. Sí. O doce o diez. She always takes care of her children and uh, make food all the time, has the house clean, and I don't have to make food because I work. And after I come to work at five, she already has food for us. Salsa, This is my um, nephew. Um, his name is Fernando Hernandez. Like his dad. <laughs> Mi nieta tiene cinco meses. Cinco meses. Well, it's difficult to live in. Uh, with the family that speak three languages because my mom speaks only Turkey. And she understands Spanish, but she always speaks Turkey only. <laughs> my brother speaks Turkey good because he was like 10 years when he came here. When we came here in the United States, we just speak Turkey all the time in the house. And my dad said, speak uh, Spanish. Now that we know Spanish, we always talk Spanish. My dad said, Speak English because you can speak Spanish now. You have to speak English here. Cuando llegué aquí me sufrí mucho también porque no sé ni ni español. Puro triquis. Tuve trabajando en campos. Con los cinco niños ya no puedo agarrar casa. Cajuiti no un cuna alanja. Buenas tardes primo. Mi nombre es Alan. Good afternoon cousin. My name is Adam. Those are the three languages that Bernanina is much more fluent in than I am. My name is Adam Sanders. I'm a deputy probation officer for the county of San Benito. I am the coordinator for the Oaxacan Women's Project. Bernie is 
the, the glue that holds everything together. She does the phone calls. She translates for the women and she coordinates clinic visits. Uh, she gives people rides to and from uh, the meeting. And she has very good English. Um, and I, I think that that is extremely significant coming from a, a non-literate family. Oh, see, see, la, la tía de Tomás. She is a cultural broker in that she can speak with police officers, with social workers, with probation officers to give them an understanding of the way that indigenous traditional people uh, view the world. And she's really able to live in three different worlds and cross those lines graciously and uh, with pizzazz. Here is an important place for me. Because here, it was a big house that when we came to the United States, it's the first place we, where we um, stay. It was hard because we had to sleep at one room and with everyone, with my brothers, my mom, and everything. Here's the place where, where I live. I would like to look in the back, because the back is reminding me a lot of things. How it is now, everything up here changed. This is the only place that it is free because my dad don't have enough money. Before, you see a lot of gangs sitting outside, smoking, drinking alcohol. And when my dad see that, he was like, we have to move, because this park is not right for you guys, because you guys kids. This fence right now remember me bad thing. I remember when I was living here, uh, my dad bring us food at five afternoon when he get out for his work. He, he comes and have food. We eat one time a, a day. My life was not that happy for that time. So to be here and know, know that you don't know Spanish and English and then people you can see, but you can talk to them. This is some um, main middle school. This is my school before. I didn't can uh, communicate with another kids or play with another kids and they always push me and I don't know what to say to a teacher. And then um, when I fight with this girl named uh, Hilda, like I was so mad that I didn't think what I was going to do. So I sent her to hospital. <laughs> Cause I punched her in her nose. So uh, like four teachers trying to stop me with her. But you know the girls, when they get the hair, they don't stop. <laughs> so that is my story here in school. It was so hard for me that part of it. I think it was the worst thing that I can remember. It was the ugly thing that the girls told me things and they told me Indian and they told me that I'm dumb because I don't know nothing. It's synonymous in Mexico. The word for stupid is the same as Indian. Um, que tan indio es, what an Indian he is, how stupid he is. Bernie has proven herself to be anything but stupid. She works at a construction company in Hollister, Hi. where she specializes in a computer-aided design program. This is my job. I'm design trusses. I like my job. When I start, I didn't know how to turn on, turn on my computer. So they start helping me. Uh, this is my page of my space. I have all the pictures of my family. This is the actor that I love, Fernando Falunca. I think he looks like my boyfriend. <laughs> And here I'm with my friends. Here's my boyfriend pictures. You have to see this, this is nice. Just this part. Okay. Soy Triqui. Este es mi pueblo. Hola amigos, me encantaría compartir este video con ustedes. Este es mi gente, así nos vestimos allá en donde somos. Es de Oaxaca donde yo soy. Gracias a Dios, a mi familia, soy lo que soy y adelante siempre. Ok, Rafael, ya nos vamos. Gracias. Bye, Miguel. Bye, Miguel. No está. No está mi boyfriend. Oh, Luto, Hugo, para allá. This is my room. This is my bed. And there is my sister. And here's my mom when she get married with my dad. Then my mom looks so young. <laughs> this is a clothes uh, uh, women's use over there, always. They call it Babil. This is my boyfriend. We have one year and seven months. Gabriel es el único que me ha tratado muy bien. Y siempre es muy buena gente con mi papá y con mi mamá también. 
With a boyfriend, a car, and a job, Bernie's a typical 20-something. But she also answers to a community that guards its traditions and its women. Mi rancho, ahí sí, 20 mujeres, las mujeres. La muchacha de 10 años para arriba. Las niñas. Las niñas, decimos. Y ya cuando llega 10 años, 12 años, lo vende unos 30 mil pesos mexicanos, la muchacha. Mi costumbre de nosotros ya, todos nosotros tenemos a otro, otro leyes allá. Cuando me miran con un amigo, uh, like, we, if I have friends, they start saying, oh, I saw um, Fernando daughter with another guy. So for them, they're my boyfriend, everyone that I talk to. Tengo otro pensamiento. Gracias a Dios que me vine para acá. Yo no quiero vender mi hija. It's so difficult. It's like, that is the part more hard for me. Because um, I came here like 14 years ago. So uh, I learned everything about here in the United States. People have gossiped about her, talked bad about her um, for kind of breaking out of this, mold, this typical traditional mold of uh, what an indigenous woman is. With the indigenous cultures, the primary role of the woman is to be the caretaker in the home. Um, sometimes I would hear women being uh, spoken of as street walkers because they would walk to the store by themselves uh, to go shopping. About 100 adults attend the monthly meetings of the Oaxacan Women's Project while teenagers babysit the kids outside. But tricky customs die hard, even in the United States. For the public health nurses who founded the program, reaching out to the women was a major challenge. They were working with the population and noted that uh, there was a higher tendency towards uh, infant morbidity, uh, teenage mothers. There was actually the very first time they invited all the women and they got about 20 men that showed up. The men were very concerned that we would be teaching the women what they say is ab abrir los ojos, that they would open their eyes. Women were not allowed to come by themselves, so the men would have to come with them. And so when they expanded it to include uh, topics for the men as well, labor rights, um, fair housing, um, that's when it uh, kind of took off. While the program struggled to reach tricky families, Bernadina was using her hard-won independence to help out. Because my mom has a lot of um, friends, and they're always home. They have kids, a kid. <laughs> so they always sing, um, they sing me and they go like, oh, you can't give me a ride in the clinics. You can't give me a ride in the hospital. Help me to write paper. <laughs> <laughs> so I start that level, slow, slow with the people. And they see me, all appointment, they come. All appointment, they come. She was driving people to the uh, clinics on her own time during her lunch hour and when we found that out, we started actually um, uh, reimbursing her for that time through the Oaxacan Women's Project. We advertised the meetings through the local Spanish uh, radio. One person showed up, but I can make one phone call to Bernadine and say, we're gonna have a meeting on this date and 80 people, 80 adults will show up. Um, so she's able to uh, disseminate the information and knows everything about everybody, so. But with Bernadina's freedom and abilities come responsibilities to her family. Money is always short, and at $15 an hour at the construction company, Bernie is the top earner, even without a high school diploma. Here's the clinic where I come and with my people and help them. So this is the place. They want me to come and work here, but I don't have a lot of choice neither because they're going to pay me $9, I wish. I can't go there because that is one of my dream to be, to help people. If Bernadina did work in a clinic as a receptionist that speaks tricky Spanish and English, she would be selling herself short. Especially for somebody who has as much natural intelligence and drive as her, uh, that had she uh, a, a fuller education or more opportunities, I, I think that she would be, uh, you know, maybe a, an administrator of a clinic rather than just having to work as somebody who answers the phone. <laughs> At the moment, Bernadina isn't thinking that big. Her mother recently went back to work, picking strawberries in the fields after a decade of taking care of the children in the house. Today is the first day of my mom to go to work in the field. Yeah, she was kind of scared in the morning. She was like, oh, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. It was a funny day today.
because I look at her and she looks scared. But it's not good for me because I had to take care of my brothers. It will be difficult because I had to get out like at 6.30 to cook to my dad to take him to his work. Bernadina dreams of stepping into a more professional role in her community. But for now, her family takes priority, and her night classes will have to wait until the fall. She says her time is precious, but she'll continue to translate at meetings and whenever she's needed. I start all this by my own. I start saying, if you need help, call me. If you need right, call me. Don't get embarrassed. If you want me to go with you to the clinics, call me. Like, I can do it. I have my time to do it if you want me to do.